Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to the Photo Show. We're going to carry on looking at the Nick Collection uh, software plugins today. Uh, if you, you didn't see the last episode, we were looking at how Google has now released the Nick Collection, which is seven different pieces of software plugins that work with both Lightroom and Photoshop. And they've now released them as a free download. They used to be $150, sort of £100, but as of, uh, the, of March 2016, these are now completely free. So if you run Photoshop or Lightroom, they're well worth downloading and having a play with. Uh, there'll be a link in the description, and if you want to view the previous uh, video as well, you can click the box that's coming up now, and that will take you and show you how to download the Nick Collection. But what we're going to do today, we're going to take a look at one of the seven pieces of software. We're going to look at what's called Viveza. Now, Viveza is software that allows you to work with the colours and tones within your images to try and bring the best out of them. And it works really well with landscapes, uh, but it can be used with other images. So we're going to start off here. We've opened up this uh, landscape image. This was actually taken in Normandy, France, uh, and this is Omaha Beach, famous from the D-Day landings in the Second World War. And... It's an okay um, landscape shot, but let's open up uh, the image in Viveza and see how we can make adjustments to try and give this image a bit more life and a bit more punch. So you'll see here we've got the Nick Selective tool. If this isn't showing, if it's like that, if you come across to File, come down to Automate, and in your list there you should have Nick Collection Selective tool. So we click that. This is provided you've downloaded the software and it's it been installed on Photoshop. But there, there you go. So now we've got the selective tool open. And you can see we've got seven different pieces of software. Define 2, Viveza 2, HDR Pro 2, Analog FX Pro 2, Color FX Pro 4, Silver FX Pro 2, and Sharpener Pro 3. Today we're going to look at Viveza. So if you click the drop down there, we've now got the option there to click that. What that's going to do is going to make a separate layer over our background and now open that image within the Viveza workspace so that we can start to make some adjustments with it. So there we go. We, the, the Viveza workspace has opened up over the top of Photoshop. If you want to show this full screen, just press F on your keyboard and now you've got the Viveza workspace full screen on your uh, computer to work with. Now, if you look over here in the top left-hand corner, you've got three buttons for views. As you can see, what we're on originally here is single image view. The next one there will do a 50-50 split. So once you've made adjustments, the left-hand side of the image will be the original, the right-hand side will show the adjustments. And you can switch this around to be a horizontal or a vertical split. The next option here is to show the images as two separate images. One will be the, the pre-worked on, one will be the post-worked on. And you can show that as a side-by-side -side as well. So we're going to go back to the single image view and come across to the right hand side and this is your control panel so here's where you've got all your controls that you can work on and you can see here it says global so we've got all of these sliders and if we work on these in this area these are global ad adjustments these will work across the entire image so we have brightness so if we pull the brightness slider up you can see that the the image is getting lighter if we pull it down, it's getting darker. To return this back to its default setting, just double click on the arrow and it'll go back to zero to default. Next one down, you have contrast. Pull the contrast down and it will flatten the image out, make a very gray flat image. Pull it up the other way and you can see it's introducing more contrast, more, um, more of a difference between the, the blacks and the whites in the image, the darks and the lights. Again, double click it and that'll take it back to zero. Next one is saturation. And if we pull this to the right hand side, you can see it's increasing the saturation. All of the colors are becoming a lot more saturated. You can go right to the extreme there. And if you come the other way, you'll start to desaturate the image all the way down to a monochrome black and white image. Double click the arrow, take you back to the center there. Next slider down we've got here is structure. And this is very similar to the clarity slider that you get in both Camera Raw and Lightroom. So if we pull this to the, the left hand side, it's going to soften the image up and give a sort of a, a, a very soft image, almost a, a um, blur type of image. We go the other way and you can see it's really starting to uh, affect the details in the image. Go all the way up there and you, you've got a, you know, a way over processed almost HDR looking image. 
double click that back to the center next one down is shadow adjustments and again this will affect the shadows within the image pull it to the to the left and it will darken the shadow areas down pull it to the right and it will lighten the shadow areas up next one down is warmth which is the uh, same as your temperature slider within Lightroom and camera raw and this will if you pull this to the right hand side will warm the image up you can see it's bringing in more uh, oranges and reds there to warm the image up pull it the other way and it'll introduce more blues and magentas to, to cool the image back down again so again we'll go back to the center there and then you've got red green and blue your RGB channels so bring it that way and it'll push the 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 reds in the images bring it the other way and it will take the reds out and introduce more green the green obviously we go it'll do the opposite to the red you pull it this way it'll introduce more green to the image put it the other way it will take more green out and introduce more red because they're opposing colors blue again bring it this way it'll introduce more blue into the image bring it the other way and it'll introduce more yellow into the image so that's just your, your RGB red green and blue sliders and then the last one here you've got is hue and this will affect the overall colors in the image like, yeah, like your hue and saturation so you can see there we've changing all of the colors throughout the image click that back to center now as I said before these are global adjustments if that's what you want to do if you just want to make a few adjustments globally to the image then you know, you, you'll, you'll come up with some good results but one thing about all of the Nick software is one of their strengths lie in what's called control points and what these allow you to do is to select certain areas of the image that you can work on individually so for example if we click on this to add a control point now if we come into the image now you can see we've got a little target area and let's pick the sky so if I click there on the sky and now we've got this entire row of adjustments uh, the, the top slider here if I click on that this is what's called they, they, they call it the circle of influence now it doesn't just affect within that circle what it's actually doing is masking the individual colors and tones that you have selected if you come across again now to your right hand side you can now see we've got control point one which is our control point that we've just added if we click in the little box next to it there what it's doing it's showing us now what is going to be affected by that control point anything that's in white will be affected by the control point anything that's black won't be so if we increase the size of that circle you can see now that it's starting to affect more of the sky but the sea the land the clouds and all that are, are pretty much untouched so let's take the mask off and start making some adjustments and you'll notice here that we have the same adjustments here as we have in the global selection top one is BR which is brightness so if we bring that up you can see it's going to brighten the sky but it's only brightening the sky it's not affecting the the, the the sea or the beach or anything like that so let's bring the sky down just a couple of percent there next one down is our contrast let's raise the contrast a little bit in the sky there next one is saturation so let's give a little boost of saturation in the sky there next one is structure so let's add a little bit of structure as well which is bringing out a bit of detail in the clouds there as well shadow adjustments I think we'll leave that as it was at zero so there what we've done we very quickly you got a preview button here which you can click on and off which will take you back to the original image so that's where the sky started before we added the control point and that's where we are now we've we've brought in a lot more color and we've um, darkened the sky down now it's only affecting this area of the sky at the moment this area is pretty much untouched now you can add another control point over to here but a really good thing with the Nick software is, is you can actually duplicate the control points so if we click on our control point there hold down alt or option on our keyboard and drag the control point over here and what we've done is we've now got two control points and we've duplicated the one that we had over here 
to this side here so we're affecting the sky in both ways so if we duplicate it again hold down alter option and we'll bring it into this area of the sky and now you can see with those three control points let's click at the preview on and off there we've brought a lot more drama into the sky and now you can start to play around with this let's add another control point for the clouds here so again you can check what's being affected and you can see there it's just affecting the clouds there let's bring that out a little bit more and take the brightness down just a touch on the cloud bring a bit more detail into it add a little bit of contrast and add a little bit of structure right so there really quickly and you can turn these control you can see here we've got control point one two three which are the three we've put across the sky control point four which is highlighted is the one we're working on now and you can turn these off on and off individually so that's before and that's after so very quickly you can start to make some adjustments in some very localized areas let me just go through this a little bit more let's uh pick out the the, the grass now so let's add another control point and we'll add a control point into the grass there see which area is being affected we can make our area of influence larger and you can see it's it's only going to affect the stuff that's green it's not going to affect the sky or the clouds that we've just been working on it's masked it out so it's just going to affect the green so let's darken that down a little bit add a little bit of saturation a little bit of structure and bring the shadows down a touch so there we go very quickly we've made some quite dramatic adjustments to this image just do one more here on the on the sea you can see it's selected really well it's really selected out just the sea let's brighten the sea up a little bit add a little bit of color saturation a little bit of structure there we go so let's click our, our side by side view and you can see now here on the left hand side is the image that we started with and the right hand side is the adjustments we've made just using a few control points and all of the Nick software uses the control points for for whatever their function is and it's a really powerful way of adjusting an image very quickly so what what you do now is you if you're happy with the image click OK that will now open the image back up in Photoshop as a separate layer so you're opening over the top of your original image so there's our original image there's the adjustments we've made in Viveza. Uh You could also you could dial that back using the opacity, and work on that. You know, again back in Photoshop as an adjusted image. Okay, so we've had a look now. That's shown us how to work with a uh, landscape image. But let's shut this out and show you what you can do as well with Avaza with uh, a different kind of image. So let's open up here. Let's pick something from. Got a shot here from a wedding, so let's open this one up here. It's a nice shot of the bride and groom sitting on a golf buggy, but let's open this up in Viveza and show you what you can do using the control points to uh, adjust something different from a landscape. So let's open Viveza, and again, it's making us a, a new layer over the top of the original, and now opening that image up in the Viveza 2 workspace. So there we go it's opened up the the image now if you press f on the keyboard again that will bring the workspace up as a full screen item and th this image has already been adjusted uh within photoshop but we can now make some adjustments um using the same techniques we used in the landscape uh within this image as well so we're going to use the control points and i think the first thing looking at this image is i want to lighten up their faces a little bit so let's pick a control point and we'll bring it in and we'll just click on the bride's face there and I'm going to bring the area of influence down a little bit and again if we click here we can see exactly what is being selected so we're going to open it up just a touch let's see if we can bring them both in okay so you can see there but by, by the 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 white area that's what's going to be affected by any changes 
it's not the actual circle. The, the circle's called the area of influence, but it's looking for tones and uh, the, uh, are similar to where you've placed a control point. So let's first, let's just brighten up a little bit there. So we're brightening up the bride's face there. I'm going to drop the saturation just a touch as well. And I'm going to drop the structure down on her face as well, just to soften it out just a little bit. So let's have a look there. Before and after. You can see we're really sort of bringing them, bringing them out of the shadows there again. Uh, the groom's face is, is being affected, but I think we can do a little bit more. So let's add another control point just on the groom's face there. And I'm going to bring this one. If we show the, the masking area... Let's bring that down just a little bit so we're just affecting his face rather than the bride's as well because we've, we've already worked on that. So let's bring the brightness up a touch. Drop the saturation back a little bit just so we're matching the two. And I'm going to bring the structure up slightly on his face because I think on a, on a male face it will take it a little bit better than on a female face. Let's bring the brightness up just a touch more there. Right, so let's do the before and after. There's before. And there's after. We've really managed to sort of bring their faces out of the shadows. Now beforehand, it, it looked like a perfectly acceptable shot, but you know, now they look like they're in shadow. And we've just put a little bit of detail back into their faces. Now if we look at the dress, the dress is slightly blown out here. So let's bring another control point and we'll click it on the dress there. And we'll widen the area of influence out again and we can check again so we've now got control we've got control point one which is the bride's face control point two which is on the groom's face and control point three which I've just placed on the dress there let's click that and you can see that it's done a really good job anything in white is going to be affected here and anything in black is is going to be masked out and you can see that it has really picked out the dress brilliantly so see what happens if we drop the brightness Drop the brightness and we're losing really the, the white colour of the dress. So let's bring that up a touch there to about there. Um, add a little bit of contrast in there. And let's do structure. If we pull the structure all the way up, you can see now how much detail. If we go right to the end, how much detail that has bought out of the brush. And we can turn that uh, out of the dress. We can turn that control point on and off here. That's before, that's after. I think that's a little bit too much, so let's bring that back to about there, I think. And again, we can do the preview now. There's before, there's after. So you can see we've, we've brought their faces out of the shadow and we've added a bit more detail into the, the dress itself. Um, again, let's go, let's try this. Let's Put a control point on the grass at the background there. See exactly where we're affecting there. Let's bring that up a little bit more. And again, anything in white is going to be affected. Anything in black is not going to be touched at all. So let's just darken the background down a touch. Maybe lose a little bit of the saturation. Let's actually increase it. Lose a little bit of saturation there. And add a little bit of structure. And you can see now we've darkened the background down, which is, is pulling them, you know, the, the focus is now more on them than it is on the entire picture. It's, it's actually focusing it down. So let's, uh, what, if, what we want to do, I want to use the same control point over this side as I have here. So we can duplicate this. So if you hold down Alt on your keyboard, click on the control point, drag it across to where you want it, drop it in, and you can see there that it's darkened the grass down there. And we can do the same with this area just down here. So that's really quickly, I've just used a few control points. Let's, let's have a look at this again. So that's where we started. That's where we finished. Once again, click OK. That's now gonna open that up into Photoshop. 
And there we go. We've now got it as a separate layer. We've got our original background layer and we've got a, another layer there marked up as Viveza 2. So if we turn that off, that's where we started with the image. And that's where we finish with the image. So you can see with using something like Viveza and especially utilizing the control points, the control points are the key really to all of the Nick software. They allow you such a localized adjustment on the image and you can get some really good results really quickly. Obviously, all, you know, all of this could have been done in Photoshop, but you'd have been masking out areas and um, you know, to, to, to pick out the, the, the faces of the, the, the couple would have been a lot longer process than it was in Viveza. So there you go. That's t uh, two uses for the Viveza 2 software. Hope that's been helpful. Uh, we'll look at some more of the Nick software and some of the other vi videos coming up. But for now, my name's Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.